Okay, so here we have it. The Men's Health Beyond 30 training module. This is one that's been long awaited. Uh, it's one that I've been, I want to say procrastinating on, wanting to put out, but it's definitely something that's very relevant to me in my life right now. So I'm actually going to be guiding you through a process that I'm living through right now myself. Um, so I will cover as much as I physically can and from a reading, research and living through perspective, I will give you as much information as I physically deem usable. Um, things do get a little bit complex outside of the realms of what's useful information. So I want to keep this concise. I want to give you everything that I can physically give you that's going to help you move forward to understand what you're feeling, what how you're thinking, what's going on, potential options that you have to be able to manage health moving forwards, uh, and just kind of like what all this looks like for you know male health beyond the age of 30 to 35 years old. So here we go. So fellas, not feeling the same, not feeling the same. This was something that I definitely felt myself for going on for a few years. Now, there is, I would say there's a growing evolution without sounding cheesy. There's a growing evolution of what this looks like um, as certain hormones start to decline. You don't tend to notice it straight out of the gate. Um, I didn't catch it straight out of the gate myself. I kind of just, I don't know, there was just, there were things that I was still doing very well and there were things that I was noticing was were a little bit harder and I didn't really have a full understanding as to what it was until I went down the routes of blood work, etc., which I'm going to cover in later modules. So in this particular module in itself, I'm going to be getting into um, the uncoverings of what it is that you're feeling, experiencing, things to look out for, just kind of like the signs maybe the onset early signs um, that we should be looking out for with regards to how our health's going to be playing out over the years to come so that we can either try and grab this relevantly early or we can look at this and say, right, I'm already in the phase of this. What options do I have moving forwards? Now, anything that I will say, and I will categorically say, obviously I'm not a you know GP, professional, medical, prescriber in the sense of medications, et cetera, et cetera. I can only give you the research that I've done on my behalf to give you the understanding of these are the things that do help. These are the things that you possibly should consider. Uh, and it is always on your part to seek medical advice uh, with regards to taking medical action towards changing or bettering health should you need medical intervention. So here we go. We're going to get into this. So in the series of coaching training modules, we're going to be going into and uncovering the things that we should be paying attention to that, aren't, that we aren't made aware of when we're around our 30s. So I can't say that this has ever been something that was made very aware or apparent to me through my 30s, not even from what I can remember. And I've been in the coaching space throughout my 30s as well. Now, I wasn't made aware of any of this other than how I'm physically thinking, feeling, the things that I'm doing day in, day out. But you don't really know the workings of what's going on on the inside. So there's a few things that you need to look out for, which I'm going to cover in this training module for you. But in our, in our 20s, we feel absolutely unstoppable. So why is it from our 30s that we begin to feel things change in specific ways? Now, you might feel things differently to the way I have been experiencing them. Um, there is one topic that I'm going to actually cover in this. Um, it's probably going to be the third module. So the second module is all about testosterone. The third module is going to be about sort of like the well-being side of things. But the masking of mental health and low testosterone levels is something that I'm going to get into in a later training. That's one thing that's very important. Um, but that being said, throughout your 20s, you feel unstoppable. Now, we kind of go through life latching on to carrying that energy of our 20-year-olds and pushing us further and further forward into the future. And we're doing all of these things. So why is it that you know from our 30s that things start to change? What is it that we start to see? Now, natural regression of testosterone is one of them life you know we don't have the same stresses in our 30s as what we did when we was in the 20s and vice versa we don't have the same stresses in our 20s as what we do when we're in our 30s and above so there's a there's a, a, a let's say there's a multitude of things that really start to play in on what starts to affect hormones along the lines of potential medications um, choices that we make in our lifestyles so again i'll cover all these throughout the module as we work through so what is it that we're really looking at? Now, if you know anything about testosterone, 
Testosterone, which I'm going to cover in the second module as an entirety in itself, but testosterone is basically the male defined, you know, the male dominant hormone. It's the thing that tells us, you know, from early on how we go through puberty, how we progress. Um, male and females do carry testosterone, but it's a very, very small percentage in females in comparison to males. So it's the defining sex hormone for males. Now, the relevant ranges. I would say are very, very wide scoped um, through doing my own blood work and going through, you know, having I've had many a test done at this point now, um, getting a better understanding of what this is and how this looks. I think every male should really know, they need to know how to read their own blood work. So this graph here is just a, it's just a, a baseline example of what it looks like. Now there's a normal range. This normal range is, not so normal. It should be a lot narrower than what it actually is. And I would say the the minimal baseline needs to be higher. So giving you reference of perspective. So I'll read through the graph first. So this graph in itself. So this is peak test testosterone peaks at around about mid twenties. You know, anywhere from through from like twenty one up to twenty six, um, and then it starts to have a slow decline after that. And again, like lifestyle choices, stresses, medications. Um, maybe there's medical illnesses that's involved. Anything can impact testosterone production going through later on in life. Now, this is taking an average of around 110,000 men studied that were tested through an age range of, I think it was 15 through to about 85, from what I remember. Um, when it was tested throughout this range, this is these are the results that came back. Now, the, the baseline that we're looking at here is the solid blue line through the middle. That is the median average of all that was tested. Now, there was a bracket, which is basically the brackets of the gauges that we're running through now. So there's the low bracket and the higher bracket that run through. But we're going to be concentrating on the blue line that runs through the middle. Now, that's the median. Now, this is the one that most health professionals will take into consideration. An average person that is healthy in testosterone will probably have a reading of the, a serum reading of testosterone at around about 22 to 29, 30 points, which you can see the nanomoles per liter on the side there. Now, that is an average healthy-ish range. When you start to see this declining, you start to get to those lower parameters of this. So this starts to become you know, your sub-20s. Now, I would say around down to around about 15, you you would start to then start to feel what it feels like to have low testosterone. So it's around about 15 animals per, per liter. You will start to feel what it feels like. It's around about 15. Now, sub 15 starts to have a drastic impact. If you were to go to a GP in the UK, this would look like it's 12.5 is their low baseline. Now, you have to test multiple times below 12.5 for a course of action to be escalated. Not treatment, but just escalated to the next level. Now, the testing multiple times below 12.5 is, is actually made very, very hard. It feels like this is a, an entire uphill battle, and this is something that I'm currently facing as well. So I went with private blood work, and I had, an, I had a reading of 8.2. Now, for 18 months prior to this, I've been suffering and dealing with multiple things that's been really, really present, which will be covered throughout all of these modules. But it got to a point where I was thinking, why? You're like, why am I feeling this way? What is it? Because I do all of the things that I do to look after myself. So how is it that I've ended up at this point where I don't really know what's going on with the outcome? So this is why that this this range is the thing that you need to keep in in mind throughout the entire of this this basically this whole training module in itself if you ever have your blood work done and you're sub 12 nanomol per liter on the side if you're sub 12 you need to go and speak to a gp immediately i would say if you're between 12 and 15 you will probably be seen by a GP, but they will dismiss you very, very quickly because they will see that because you're above 12.5, they will look to try and pass you on to another form of self-seeking, let's say, um, treatment therapy. So this might be going to a private clinic or taking private health care and getting this resolved in some other manner, which there are testosterone replacement therapies out there that can actually treat this scenario. 
So taking mine as an example, I was 8.2. I was immediately referred to GP because of how low this was. And I then had multiple tests done with the GP, all come back below 12, yet I still wasn't escalated because of my age. I've just turned 40 at the point of creating this training. Um, so I was 40 in August and it's now just turned April of the following year. So less than six months between turning 40 and where I am now, because of my age, they didn't really deem it as important, um, which it is because it's massively affecting mental health. It's affecting a lot of recovery, productivity. It's affecting my mood, emotional state, concentration, uh, it's having a very, very drastic impact on life right now. So the higher range is kind of like where you're 25 to 30 is. That's where you're going to be around about your mid-20s. Or you would expect to see yourself around about your mid-20s. So if you can see from this graph here, we've taken a medium in the middle of this, which is kind of like the average of high and low people. Um, it's really setting like just a, a, a normal baseline to be able to kind of say, well, am I close to this? Now, this would be in a reading of around about 15 to 20 um, points. I always refer to them as 15 to 20 points because it's just too, too much of a mouthful to keep going back to nanomoles per liter. But still, we're going to around about just above 15 to 20 is going to be kind of like a normal. Most people will be anywhere between 20 to 29. Um, those that have a high testosterone are going to be 30 to 35 plus. Again, that might be something that wants to be controlled you might need to have some kind of estrogen therapy to try and bring the levels back down again just in case testosterone is, testosterone is too high but we're really looking at the the impact that it has on health and declining health later on in life and what this actually means for us moving forwards so the be all and end all of this slide is if you have private blood work done which you can find inside of the members area which with regards to what, you know, what to look for, et cetera, et cetera. If you have blood work done and it's below 12, 12 or 12.5 nanomol per liter, then immediately speak to somebody professional that can get you possibly into some kind of treatment or start going through a testing phase to get the right treatment. If you are between 12 and 15, you're going to struggle to get kind of treatment through professional help. You're going to have to then go to private help to have this done. Now, I don't mean under the counter kind of private help here. I mean, as in like private, you know, um, clinics that have, are specifically set up to deal with men's health, men's hormones, and they will have specific treatments plans in place and testing processes that will help you move forward as well. So the rule of this, the rule of this slide, if it drops below 12.5, immediately speak to somebody. If it's between 12.5 and around about 15, consider some options, do a bit of research, take this training into, take these modules into account and use them moving forward to make some informed choices. So the next one is, like I said, I'll be covering the testosterone in the next module. So the, te the next module in itself is testosterone specific. So at the end of this training, I'm going to run through all of the things inside of that. So keep an eye out towards the end of this training for what's going to be covered in the next training in itself, the next training module. So what does all this mean for you and what should you look out for? What are the signs? So there are a few things that really start to get impacted when low testosterone is indicated. So mental well-being is one of the first indicators. You might be misdiagnosed as having poor mental health. So for instance, I'm somebody that has dealt with, um, I've battled mental health. I still battle mental health. I talk about it like it's a past tense, but it's very present. Um, I, I went through a mental health breakdown when I was 28 through to 31. And there were numerous stages throughout that that I know are mental health related. So when I went to and speak to medical professionals, and I'm saying this without any disrespect of highlighting, but when I went to medical professionals, it was very textbook. It was very, you know, read from the textbook. This is the outcome. And I didn't feel like I was being listened to as an individual. Now, explaining it, it was, oh, maybe you should consider, you know, medication, antidepressant medication, you know, medication that's going to be more leaning towards mental health. Now, through lots and lots of reading, studying, research, if you want to call it that, I came across a bunch of research papers that were connected to medications to do with mental health. So as a 
I want to say a byproduct because it is a it is sort of you know it is a it is something that's created due to the fact of taking medications for mental health is med- mental health medication can actually have an impact on testosterone production later on in life this was not explained to me at the time so the side effect of this is that later on in life you can start to experience reduced testosterone production because of mental health medication now i was on a lot of mental health medication antidepressants all kinds of things um, from the age of 28 through to about 31. So until I came across this information and how it was connected to mental health, a lot of the time if you go to a GP and you're just saying, Doc, I'm not feeling myself, I'm not feeling great, like I just kind of feel a little bit, I don't really know, I can't put my finger on it, I'm just not feeling right. You know, can we look at getting some tests done? You're more likely to be looked at for mental health than what you would be for testosterone. So please, please, please demand that you have your GP or practitioner do blood work before you get given any mental health medication because you are likely being treated for something that isn't needing to be treated at all. And if anything, it's going to further the problem. So that's just something I want to make you very, very aware of is testosterone, low testosterone can be masked as mental health because the symptoms of how we feel look very similar in both scenarios. But obviously one is very internal health and one is very mental health related. Now they are relatively connected. So obviously how you're physically feeling can impact how you're physically thinking, but try not jump the gun straight away before you know where your blood work is at. I wish I'd been told about blood work being done and having that monitored over the years, if not privately, at least through medical practices. But I'd have done that over the years so that I could have seen where my blood work is and kind of how my body's responding and what my body's doing internally, the things that I can't see. So that's just a, a, a lesson that I've learned that I want to be able to pass on is do not accept any kind of mental health medication until you know what your blood work is, what your blood work looks like. And hopefully what I can going really to teach you throughout these modules will help you read what this blood work looks like and you can make informed choices for yourself moving forwards that way. So... That being said, we'll carry on now. So it's your mental well-being. You know, how are you generally feeling? Um, how is your mood? How is your? How are you being productive? Or what does your productive state look like? These are things that are clear indicators from the very early stages um, with regards to how you physically feel. So your general day-to-day habits. And the reason why I bring this up because there's a point that I'm going to make further on down this is very relevant to your daily operation. So these are the things you need to be mindful of when it comes down to looking for specific indicators in men's health with declining testosterone level production. The first one, one of the first things you might notice is that zest that we have. You know, that that kind of fire that we have that pushes us through, that really kind of drives us to be able to do something. It's that zest. It's that running through a brick wall, fire underneath our feet, Things that's going to move forward, the, the things that I always say, the, the things that get shit done, that you tend to lose the edge of. That's one of the first things that you'll notice is that aggressive kind of nature that you had, that maybe, you know, that tenacity, that that real hard drive, that is the thing that you start to feel like fizzles out. You don't really notice it straight out of the gate. You don't really notice it over a long period of time. You just kind of wake up one day and go, I just don't feel the same. And you start to look back at when was the last time I felt like I was like, I'm really going to, you know, like I'm going to tear down a wall or I'm going to go in and absolutely rip a training session to pieces or, you know, just like be really, really intentful with energy towards something. You start to question when the last time that was. So that's just something that is an awareness of self-awareness is when did I start to feel like that fire was slowly dwindling? Next one is sex drive or your in your interest in, in sort of sexual activities. Now, this is a decrease of sexual interest. Again, you could put this down to stress. There's a lot of things that can mask these things, stress being one of them, um, lifestyle choices, so obesity, alcohol, etc. They're all things that can massively impact how you physically feel about interest in sex as well. But if you if you, you know, if you're in a long-term relationship, you've got a, a long-term established partner, and you know exactly how the relationship works and you see the dynamics of that changing because you're not physically feeling a particular way or you're seeing long bouts of sexual interest sort of increasing. Um, That's something to be aware of as well and kind of go, right, you know, I'm putting two and two together at this point. 
we're ticking these boxes that Andy's spoken about. Maybe this is something I need to be aware of at this point. So there's nothing in the sense of like being over analytical. You might find that there's erectile dysfunction and things like that, or there's just not the same kind of level of interest that you would normally have. But again, it's something to speak to somebody about and don't feel ashamed of being able to speak to somebody about it either. I, It isn't the most comfortable thing to do. I will say that. But that being said, it's your health at the end of the day. And this is part of you. So this is part of who you are as an individual. And I think that nobody should have to sit being or trying to masquerade as somebody else or being a former version of yourself whilst you're trying to battle through something. So being outspoken, even if, if it's just with your partner, making them aware of how you physically feel, is going to lighten the load from you physically so that you can concentrate on what really needs to happen to you know, put some preventative measures in place and you can then regain control of your health. So don't hide away this part of who you are. Speak to, speak to whoever it is that you're with and just make them aware of how you're physically thinking and how you're physically feeling. Chances are the support's going to be there for you that you didn't know was there. People are understanding so long as you're, you know, you're understanding with them and giving them a clear cut. This is how I am. This is what I'm experiencing. This is what I'm thinking and feeling right now. Um, and move forwards with it. Don't let it hold you back. Speak to somebody, a partner to begin with, maybe a professional, and see where you can get help around this. But this is just another indicator that you can say, yep, I'm going two for two on this. I know that these are things that I'm really, really sort of noticing standing out as things that it's impacting my health as I'm getting older. Next one then being is weight management. So this can be weight loss or weight gain. It can go either way. It's not specific in the type of life choices. It's just more genetic. Some people will lose weight because of testosterone production or low testosterone production. Now, this might be that you've gained a substantial amount of muscle mass over the years. And by doing so, you're now starting to witness a, like a, a you're going through a regressive state. Your body's starting to deteriorate in ways. So it's muscle wastage that's starting to happen. So this is known as cata catabolism. So you're going catabolic with muscle mass and rather than an anabolic, which is gaining tissue, you're going catabolic. So the body started to use muscle tissue as energy and it's breaking it down because it hasn't got the testosterone production there anymore to sustain that level of muscle mass. So it tries to reduce it down to a size, let's say, to make it understandable. It tries to reduce the mass down to a size that's, that creates a metabolic and homeostasis optimization so the body will start to either reduce weight or it could gain weight now you might be losing muscle mass in weight loss or you might be gaining body fat in weight gain now what this means on the other side of the scale literally is if you're gaining weight it means that the muscle mass that you had previously likely isn't enough to sustain a calorie intake that you're consuming so the weight gain part is actually easier to handle because it's no different from a process that you would take in the sense of going through a dieting phase. You just need to be very, very mindful of health, calorie intake, quality of food, exercise expenditure, intensity of exercise. Those are the five things that really pay sort of like drastic effect to being mindful of weight gain and controlling weight gain. Weight loss, on the other hand, is a different scenario and it, it will require you probably going into a testosterone replacement therapy treatment and also taking preventative action within all of those five areas as well so being mindful of your diet you know, your exercise intensity how frequently you're training your rest and recovery um, it will have you be mindful of all of these other scenarios moving forward so that you can manage both ends of what's happening on that scale but weight loss or weight gain is also another let's say side effect of testosterone decreasing I'm going to use me for this one. I don't want to be, I didn't want to pull a photo off the internet just to, for argument's sake. Um, now, this is something that I would say that I've, I fully own. I mean, this is choice. I mean, you can see the shading there, look. This is like, you know, the five, literally the five o'clock shade is what is, is probably when I'm recording this, actually. Um, but this is something that I think a lot of men are prideful over but do not recognize how hard it impacts them when it does so male pattern baldness or hair thinning is you can see at the bottom there is is dihydrotestosterone which is the dht so dht is has an increase it's a hormone that increases when testosterone decreases 
Now, this was actually my first indicator from what I can remember thinking back now as to when my body started to physically change from low testosterone. Now, I would have said it's around about the age of 37. I started to notice... I was paying more attention to how I was doing my hair. For some reason, my styles were starting to change more frequently. I was probably trying to style my hair in certain ways because I felt like, you know, hairline was maybe changing a little bit. It wasn't changing drastically, but it was just, I was starting to notice these things. And you know, shorter hair felt thinner than what I remembered it being. Longer hair felt wispier than what I wanted it to be. And I'm like, why? Like There was a frustration behind it. And I didn't really put two and two together. But potentially, yes, it was going. I was going through that higher DHT because my testosterone was starting to come down at that point, and I hadn't recognised that. I just like most people go. I'd actually had enough of doing my hair so regularly because I'm on camera a lot. I'm in, you know, I'm with people a lot, and doing my hair multiple times a day that was already stressing me out. I just thought it's time for it to come off. So the clippers came out, buzz cut. It went down to like a no guard. And it was only at that point I started to then think this is a male ego thing. I didn't want to because it kind of takes away what it feels like to be youthful when you have hair. This is speaking from a very truthful and honest place. But there was something that was quite empowering when I said, I'm not allowing that to define who I am. Like, I am still a person. I am still me. I'm still... You know, I'm still Andy at the end of the day. So I think I never saw myself as somebody actually rocking the bald look. Um, it's not something that kind of runs in the family. But again, you know, I've been through a very traumatic, um, stressful period of life. I've been on medication that most probably wouldn't have been. So these could all have been side effects that was increasing my DHT levels over the years that would have led to hair thinning. And it wasn't drastically thing. And like I say, you can still see the shading and everything, but it's just more of a personal choice before it gets to that stage. <laughs> but if we are at that stage, again, it's something that a lot of people don't understand where it comes from or why. Yes, it is genetic, um, but it's also, it can be triggered through uh, like your testosterone levels decreasing through you know dietary, obesity, alcoholism. Um, there's numerous things that I'm going to cover throughout the training that's going to be impacting the way that your body responds hormonally to things from your 30s onwards. So this is something else to be aware of as well. And I think it's not really spoken about often enough. And again, it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's You can kind of feel tested to begin with, like, why am I getting thinning here? And all the questions come with it. But you, uh, you can try and fight it with all the shampoos and all of the treatments under the sun. I mean, if you want to go down the route of you know, hair replacement, etc., like, you know, then transplant therapy might be the thing for you. Doesn't mean that it's going to stick around forever forever again. I mean, your DHT levels are still going to be rising if you don't do nothing about testosterone. So just be mindful of the choices. Um, I quite enjoy it now. I quite like it. I quite like the look. I don't mind it. I think it, uh, it's, it allows me to be a little bit more distinguished at times. But the smile is genuine. So yeah, so hair thinning, thinning and male, male pattern baldness um, is an increasing of the DHT, which is a hormone that is uh, increased uh, the the di the di I can never say this the dihydrotestosterone that is increased um, through testosterone production decreasing. So it's something to be aware of. Poor quality sleep and the lack of recovery when exercising. So again, you can boil this down to stress. You can boil this down to activity. A lot of people will just say that, oh, I'm not getting good quality sleep because I'm spending too much time on my phone or I'm just staying up too late. Maybe you're training too late. Maybe you've just got a, a lifestyle that's quite demanding and you said that I don't need to sleep when in reality you do. Well, all of these things have a long lasting impact on how testosterone is managed in the body as well. If you go through a phase where you decrease sleep recovery, you are naturally impacting natural testosterone production. So you can't give the body the recovery periods that it needs for tests to start increasing. So testosterone is at its highest first thing in the morning. It peaks first thing in the morning, then trails off towards the end of the day. Why? Well, if you think about it, it's kind of congruent with when we're resting. 
we go to bed at night, we recover. It allows our levels to increase again. And then we wake up in the morning, we start moving about through the day, stress levels start to build. So testosterone starts to decrease throughout the day. And we get a similar sort of pattern in how that looks in a day-to-day -day respect as to how that looks over a lifetime respect. So you might see that, you know, first thing in the morning, you feel quite energetic, you feel quite, you know, ready to go. And that might be because your testosterone is bordering and okay. But towards the end of the day, you might start to feel that dip and it starts to fall into that lower level where the body's actually responding in a more negative way now to having a lower testosterone amount, which is actually impacting, you know, cognitively, rest, recovery, sleep, um, how you're processing. There's a thing called decentralization, which I'm going to talk about in a second. All of those things start to impact later on in the day than what they would do first thing in the morning. So if you feel that you're on this cusp of, you know, my body's starting to respond to things in a different way, this might again be something that's a clear indicator to say, well, is my sleep and recovery disturbed long enough, consistently enough for me to make a pattern of this? Or is it related to something? You might find that you only have poor sleep when you've had certain food choices, or maybe you've been out and you've had a skin full of drink one night or something along those lines. They're self-inflicted. We know we're in control of those. But if you're doing all of the things that's positive for your health, but yet you're still sleeping poorly, you're still lack of recovery, you're not training, you're training the same, but you're not recovering in between those sessions as well. These are all markers, again, of testosterone being low. Testosterone is a hormone that will allow the body to recover quicker. Moving on to decentralization. Uh, so this is something that I came across when I was doing the research around testosterone production decreasing and what decentralization really means. Now, decentralization is kind of an all-round awareness of how you're interacting with everything externally. I kind of really didn't get, which is why I've, I've put this this like this defining term underneath a sense of detachment from thyself and the reason why i use that kind of language and terminology is because it's kind of like what it is you don't recognize your involvement you don't recognize or kind of you don't recognize respond or react to external stimulant or it may be slightly different to how you normally would be so you're maybe getting into a conversation with somebody and there's no personalization behind it it's just very you know, maybe very confrontational or it may be very abrupt. And that might be the nature of the person normally, but to that person, it might be feeling very, very different. So a lower or a decrease, should I say, in testosterone production is always going to come with uh, an attachment of this decentralization. Now, it's kind of, it says what it is. It, it, it's feeling off-center. It's feeling not fully you and where this comes from it's very hard to explain you'll know if you ever feel it because I've got a very clear memory actually I'll share it with you because it'll give you a very good understanding as to what this is like but I was doing all of I was researching all of this for around about two months um, every single day reading different papers different published papers um, as much information as I could gather to get a better understanding for myself what this really looks like for my health moving forward into the future and how could this be managed. And I came across this term of decentralization when I was looking at how medical professionals, you know, general practitioners go about assessing somebody that has low testosterone levels and it not being then a mental health scenario, but a how you're physically feeling. And the terminology te decentralization came up then. And I'd just been reading about it. And I remember going down the stairs, sitting on the stairs, putting my shoes on. I was about to go to the gym. And I was thinking about this decentralization. And I was thinking about going to the gym at that point. And normally, when I used to think about the gym in the past, I'd be quite excited to go. I enjoy going to the gym. I enjoy being physical. I enjoy trying to chase new numbers down. Um, just the intensity that it would bring. There's a discipline there that I was really, I love to reinforce. There was just an en a genuine enjoyment about going to the gym. And I was sat there after reading what decentralization was and how it makes you physically feel. And I recognized all of the things that it was making me physically feel in that sentence in itself, like decentralization, feeling detached from who you are as a person. And it kind of feels like you live just outside of your body. 
That's what I can explain what it feels like. You're very, very aware of you are you, but you think about things, you take action towards things, you do things that are slightly off-centered to who you are as a person. And that's what that decentralization is. It's doing something, you know why you're doing it, but the intent of why you're doing it has changed. Now, you can try and convince yourself because I know that I should be doing it. I know where it's going to take me. I know that it's going to be productive, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But all of those things don't actually mean that you're getting what the reward is out of it. I could go to the gym. I could train. And I did this. I had did, I, Up until this point, I had done this for a few years. Like I mentioned previously about the DHT around about 37. I'd done this for a few years and I noticed that my... My enjoyment out of training was slowly starting to kind of like decline, but I had no reason as to why. I couldn't figure out why it was declining. It was just, I I wasn't losing interest, but I wasn't as connected to it as what I used to be. And then understanding what decentralization was, I remember sitting on the stairs and going, this is exactly what decentralization is. It's that feeling partially detached from who I am as a person, but yet being fully aware of what it is that I'm doing. So just know that if you feel a little bit off-centered, like constantly feel like you, you're you aware of who you are, but you know, like why I feel this way, why this, there's a lot of questions around it. That's feeling like decentralization is very, very present in your life right now. Um, it does kind of come and go. So this is something that like I say is very present for me. It does kind of come and go, but I will say that at this point where I'm at right now, um, I normally get a sense of decentralization one to two times a week, and I'm in a self-treatment process of natural testosterone, you could say trying you know, improvements, but I'll get into how you do all of that in the next module anyway with regards to testosterone. But decentralization... Kind of feeling a little bit off-centered um, permanently, consistently, or just recognizing of it. That's another thing that need, you need to be aware of. Exercise fatigue or excesses fatigue, should I say. You can say that this comes from overtraining. You could say that this just comes from burning the candle at both ends. Um, if life just feels ridiculously hectic, uh, you could be extensively pushing you know, the bookends further and further apart, trying to squeeze more and more into the day. But the fatigue is to the point where your body is wanting to shut down. This isn't, you know, I'll have a cup of coffee and I'll muscle through the rest of the day. This is, I can say this has been me at points. This office floor, I've had to lay down on at times because I can't physically keep my eyes open. I can't physically keep going. There's been times where my body was shutting down. I'm sat on the sofa and my eyes would just roll and I physically can't keep my body upright. I'm just wanting to pass out. The excessive fatigue is a byproduct stroke side effect of low testosterone. Um, And because of the imbalance, it's kind of your body's trying to force you into a state of recovery because you're not getting enough of it to try and balance out somewhat of a low low level testosterone production. So it's trying to. So if you are finding that you are excessively fatigued over you know, days or long periods of time, you are massively in a diminished energy state, and the body is saying to you, "I need some recovery just to try and get back to a level that is marginally operational for me." It might not even be close to a healthy testosterone level, but it might be marginally okay that you can then carry on doing what you're doing. So if you're in a a really excessive fatigued state, make sure you pay attention to this because this has been a game changer for me. Um, Being really strict and regimented with bedtimes, bedtime routines, um, all of these things I've covered in individual modules inside of the members area as well. But these things in themselves are, you know, they're small indicators of bigger processes that help everything moving forwards. Paying attention to what I'm eating, how I'm eating, um, I won't get into the food intolerances, et cetera, but they've all been tested as well. And they've all, you know, addressing all of those stressing impacts has have a, a positive effect. So you can improve the fatigue when you start to look at what's surrounding and creating that fatigue throughout the day and make sure that you take the recovery process as seriously what you are trying to take the day. 
Um, so apart from age-related symptoms, what else is contributing to how you currently feel? So these are some. These aren't even all, but these are some of the things that can contribute towards a testosterone level showing as being low, lowly produced or not recovering from. So you can have an iron overload, brain, brain or head injury, chronic medical conditions. So these sit outside of like organ failure. So this could be things that liver, etc. Kidney failure, HIV and AIDS, alcohol use disorder or alcoholism, um, poorly managed diabetes, obesity, um, obstructive sleep apnea as well something that I've dealt with in the past as well, sleep apnea, um, and certain medications, including estrogens. So estrogen is the counter to testosterone. So if you have increased estrogen, your testosterone will be decreased, vice versa. Normally when you push testosterone high, it pulls estrogen down. So if you've got estrogen that's pushing high or you're on estrogen supplement, it will pull testosterone levels down. And also... Um, psychoactive drugs. So things like things that are for, like I mentioned a little bit earlier on, are like mental health medications, antidepressants, um, things that are, you know, beta blockers, diazepam, um, Xanax, those type of things. They're all drugs that can obviously have an impacting, a lasting impacting side effect as well re with regards to how testosterone can be produced or the low levels of this or contributing factors. So these are just a an outline. These are just a small outline of the things that you need to be aware of when it comes down to male health being managed beyond your 30s. If I'd have known all of this throughout my 30s, I'd have probably made different choices, especially around medication, but also just more mindful choices earlier on in life around managing what all this feels like and how I can make better use of what my body's doing moving forward to kind of, you're never going to bulletproof the end scenario. There are, again, like there are, there are certain medications. I want to come back to this actually, because one of the things that like, you know, if you've ever been a steroid user or you've had steroids from medications in the past as well, these can be contributing factors that can you know, damage natural testosterone production because artificially introducing something like that into the system decreases its natural production because it's expecting there to be a, a false, you know, uh, a false body um, come into the human body and say, well, you know, I don't need to produce this naturally anymore. So what's the, you know, what's the kind of like, what's the need for it? So it shuts down its natural processes and starts to rely on that external that external source for its normal process. This in theory is what TRT is, uh, which again, I'll get into that, but this is what TRT is later on down the line, is you're introducing again a replacement testosterone therapy or testosterone replacement therapy, if I'm using the terminology correct. And by doing that, obviously all you're doing is replacing artificially what the body's trying to produce if you've taken steroids throughout your life or you're on steroid medication, it can also have an impacting lasting, it can have a lasting impact on your health too. So certain medications, like I say, there it's not just about the estrogens or you know mental health medications or psychoactive drugs that have been taken, but it can also be about maybe past medications that you've been on that's been for something else, you know, bodily specific, um, that's had a side effect later on down the line that you were not made aware of. So all that being said. Choices. We're here now. What do we get to do with them? So in the next module, I'm going to be talking to you about testosterone specifically. Now, what does this go? This is going to cover what DHT is. So kind of kind of alluded to it a little bit in this one in itself. Um, the impact of DHT, what this is going to really mean, how it's sort of like triggered in the sense of what starts to happen, um, how testosterone is produced. So from your, uh, your hypothalamus and your pituitary gland, pituitary gland, should I say, um, through down to the testes and then natural, like the natural process of testosterone production being made from there. Um, explaining to you what free testosterone versus what total testosterone is as well. So if you have your bloods being read, you're looking at two different readings. What is free test? What is you know total test? What should I be looking for? Because they will have different readings. One will come out as you know maybe normal. Might one might come out low. But I, I'll explain all that to you. I'll even bring my results from my private blood work as well so I can kind of read through those and show you on the screen at the same time. Um, what if What is FSH? I'll get into that. And then what is SHBG as well? Those two, 
So the follicle, the, the top one is follicle hormone. The bottom one is your um, free binding sex hormone. Now, those two I will get into because they're very relevant to how to read testosterone production. But you can't really drastically impact those unless you go down the TRT route, which um, I'll have always explained inside of the next module as well. And then reading testosterone levels uh, and results, like what does it look like? What should I be really aware of? Um, just basically everything that's come back on my blood work that I can share with you so you can get, yep, I know what this is. I know what to expect. I know what my parameters should be. And then maybe some preventative actions that you can take as well, which I haven't included in this, but I will give from research on my part what options were in front of me to try and impact or just change the outcome moving forwards um, because there are options, but every option is unique to its individual. And for me, I know that certain things I don't want to do, things that I'm currently doing are having a small marginal, you know, positive impact, but they're not having a drastic impact that the problem solved. It's still a management process. So it comes down to, you know, what do I really want out of it all at the end? How do I want to physically feel? And being self-aware when those moments come and you are managing what low testosterone feels like or you're feeling the symptoms of low testosterone, testosterone and you can say, this isn't because of mental health. This isn't because I've not looked after myself. This is now because I have a bit bigger, better understanding of what's going on on the inside of my body. And that is what I want to get across to you is your internal health is just as, if not more important than what the external health of everything is that you do. Because the results will be that if you can look after what goes off internally a lot better, what happens externally will be 10 times easier. It's like you being 21 again and getting the same kind of results when you were 21, when you figure out the unlocking process of dealing with life moving forward with you know hormones changing later on in life. So next module, testosterone in its entirety, with all of these topics covered inside of it and a couple of remedies at the end of this, a couple of options that you might want to be considering um, inside of testosterone replacement or treatment therapy, should I say. Speak to you in the next training. Take care.